Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to discuss about the structure of a bachelor or master thesis. So you can use it for both, okay? And it's, it's, it's a very good way of presenting your scientific research and scientific analysis, okay? So let's see. First of all, what are the characteristics of a well-written master thesis or bachelor thesis? It has to be clear, it has to be concise. It should be logical in the written, you should write it in a logical manner. It should, you should emphasize on the right aspects. You should organize the paragraphs in a meaningful way. There should be a smooth transition from one topic to another topic. And you have to choose appropriate words when you are writing, okay? So many of us actually, we, we do not really get the idea of academic writing. But academic writing is a bit different than simple English writing. Okay, and we have to, we have to focus on that. The good idea, the, the best advice I can give you to improve your academic writing is to read more. Read more journal articles. The more you read and try to adapt their patterns. So the more you read, the better you will get. Okay. Here I'm going to talk about the structure of a well-written thesis. So first of all, you will have an introductory part where you will have a title page. And in the title page, normally you will put the title of your study, of your research. And remember that the title, a good title is often not more than 18 words and the shorter the better. Okay. And then you will have the abstract. In the abstract, you summarize what you have done throughout. You find you, you you start with why your study is important, okay, for whom it is important, why you have written it, how you have written it, what you have found, and again the implication of your findings for managerial practice and for theory. And a good abstract is normally about two hundred to three hundred words. Okay. And then you will have preface or acknowledgement where you try to discuss about if there were some other motivation rather than only pursuing the degree to conduct uh, this research on this particular topic. And also you try to thank your supervisor, your other friends and colleagues who helped you with data or other things. So you try to support them. Uh, you, you try to mention them and acknowledge their, their support. And then you will have a table of contents where you will give heading of each of the topics in your thesis and respective page numbers so that people can move between pages of their interest. And then you will also give a list of tables and figures in your thesis so that people can also move between the tables and figures of their interest. Okay. Then we have the main body. Here we have the introduction. First, in the introduction, again, you try to motivate why you are doing this study, why it is important. Okay. This kind of things. And then you will have the literature review. So first, you conduct a literature analysis of previous literatures, previous, li previous studies on the topic of, of your research. So what other researchers have done in the past. And then you try to place your research within those research. So you, you say, okay, those guys have done this, this, this things, these theories were used. You try to kind of analyze them critically and then you put, okay, there is a gap and this is what I'm trying to fill with my research. And then you will have data and methodology section. So in data, if you, yeah, you describe your data, whether it is qualitative or quantitative, you describe your data, characteristics of your data, and then you describe the methodology, how you analyze the data or how you plan to analyze the data. Sometimes people have two categories here. Data is one category, methodology is another, another uh, section. Okay, so sometimes people have two sections here. And then you have the results. So after analyzing, Whatever you got, you just present them in the results section. Okay, you don't discuss them. You just present what you found, and then you will have a discussion section where you discuss what you have found. You try to reflect whether previous research supported your findings as well, or you have a conflict with previous research with your findings. These things you discuss there, and what would be the reason? Maybe what could be the reason for? for not matching uh, the findings or for, for similarities in findings. Okay, you discuss this kind of things. Or, or overall, like the results you found, what is, the, what, what is the reason for that? What are the implications for that? These kind of things you discuss. Okay, in the conclusion section, you kind of repeat the overall thing, whatever you have done. So you start with 
you wanted to do these things and for this you have done this this these things and you have found this these, these things so you just repeat very briefly the, the whole study again and then you will have a limitation and suggestion for future future research section so we, we kind of all know that every study has some limitations so you, you don't try to hide it we put it there we, we, we express it we we let our audience know what are the limitations in the study okay and we try to put it in a nice way so that based on our limitations we also suggest some future research okay so that's how we try to write a paragraph or two on this topic sometimes we combine these limitations and future research with conclusions so last couple of paragraphs of conclusions will be the limitations and suggestions and then we have the finishing part we have these references uh, it's very important it's it's one of the most important things in academic writing that you proper you, you maintain you maintain appropriate st style of referencing many of the students don't really get it but please maintain a proper referencing style and if you need help when if you have too many references sometimes uh, the reference management software helps you know in note uh, mendeley yeah, this kind of uh, reference management software helps a lot then you will have the appendix sections in the appendix section we put those things which were things that you have done for your research but they are not very core to your study so that you don't put them in the main body so you just show them, you, you present it in the appendix to show your audience that, okay, you have done these, these things, okay? So if you maintain these points in your research report, it should be a very good research report, very good thesis, okay? And we will discuss in our future videos on each of the points a bit more into detail. So have a look on our channel, subscribe to our channel for details and for our upcoming videos. And thank you very much for watching. So if you like it, please like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.